Hey everyone, welcome back to my another video of Ingenious Academy. And in this video, we are going to learn the different types of stresses, engineering stresses, which we see in machine design, which we see in the strength of materials. So guys, please watch my video till the end. And guys, please do subscribe to my educational channel, Ingenious Academy. Because uh, on my YouTube channel, I do post videos regularly. And... Uh, regarding the engineering topics and if you want me to make a video on your selected topic in very easy manner in the understandable manner just uh, leave a comment below so guys without wasting any time let's begin with our today's topic that is of the different types of stresses basically so it's very important to learn you know this uh, types of stresses because uh, in the sum of the machine parts, you know, the particular part is there in loading condition or in unloading condition. If the part is in there in loading condition, it means some kind of the stresses acting on that part regularly, suddenly, impact load. So, you know, there is a particular limit that is the, uh, so that the material can withstand up to that limit. If the stress is, you know, stress induced, is like is exceeds that particular limit then that particular part fails so that's why you know it's very much important to learn those types of stresses basically the first type is nothing but the tensile stress so you know to understand this particular type let's take a like some example uh, suppose i'm having a specimen which is cylindrical in nature having a certain diameter d and having a certain length l i suppose as I, as I have explained in my previous video that is of the you know the stress strain curve you know that particular specimen is held into the UTM ultimate testing machine and you know on the both the sides you know the pulling action is there so a particular like the pulling action is there on the both the uh, sides so if we such that you know uh, that particular specimen is stretched out it means like the load is acting perpendicular to the cross-sectional area of the specimen so if the load is acting perpendicular to the cross-sectional area in such a way that it is like it pulls the specimen then that particular uh, stress developed in that specimen is termed as a tensile stress basically so as we all know the stress stress is nothing but the pressure acting on a area area is not your surface area that is the cross-sectional area of your specimen so over here this is nothing but the pulling action in the tensile stress so opposite to that the another one is the compressive stress in compressive stress there is like pushing action on the so it that's why it is uh, termed as a uh, like the compression is there so that that's why it is termed as a compressive stress so in compressive stress you know the your specimen is pushed from both the sides you know or uh, this is also the same as that of the tensile stress the load is acting perpendicular to the cross-sectional area so guys over here this line is very important that is nothing but the action of your load action of your load to the cross-sectional area so that they, this is very much important in both the tensile as well as in both the in the compression the load is acting perpendicular to your area so in the compression the compression occurs so so that the so that's why it is termed as a compressive stress so this particular compressive stress is denoted by the sigma c whereas the tensile stress is denoted by sigma t so that is the you know these two are much of the similar and in engineering in a, like in the practical engineering these two are less likely to happen because you know because the material is selected in such a manner that it would withstand this the tensile as well as the compressive stress so moving ahead next is very much important which is nothing but the shear stress well shear stress is something over here in this case the shearing is happen so shearing is nothing but the cutting off so cutting off is nothing but the, let me take a you know simple example your uh, like the scissor if you try to cut the paper you know if you we can like uh, we can uh, the scissor is there which is having a blade which is uh, like the one is goes on a downward direction and other one is on the opposite direction and then the paper gets cut it it means 
the there is a force or the load which is acting tangentially on the opposite sides well guys over here you can see that this is the you know this is the traditional image over here this is the these are the two plates which is having a rivet joint in between and these are the loads which acting on the opposite sides so as the load tries to you know tries to move that those particular plates in the opposite dikes there is a shearing occurs in that particular rivet so that's why that this particular rivet gets failed so in engineering we can term this particular shear stress in such a way that the shearing stress is nothing but the tangential stress which acts tangentially to your cross section so this particular load is acting on the rivet directly and the shearing is happens in such a way that this load is direct tangential to the cross sectional area of your rivet so that's why this particular shearing stress is denoted uh, denoted as you know this pi by 4 d square so that that is nothing but the that is nothing but the formula to carry out the to generate the shearing stress so let me give you an easy example of this shearing stress in a shop floor where the sheet sheet metal operation gets carried out on that shop floor like you can see this shearing machine is there so what is exactly this machine does is like that this machine cuts you are like the metal uh, plates having a certain amount of the thickness into two parts as per as the as per the required amount it just cut down it so that's why it is called as a shearing uh, shearing machine so basically in that particular shearing machine it is having a, a like a, a blade which gets like the pressed like tangentially to the cross sectional area of your that particular plate so this is like the shearing occurs over here so that's why it is called as the shearing machine so so this particular shearing stress is denoted as the tau so guys next one is the torsional stress so whenever torsion is there it means like you have to understand that the torsional stress is related to the something which is there in rotating motion so suppose a rod which is there in rotating motion and have a bearing which is at the one end and the shaft is continuously rotating but the bearing is uh, like the stationary parameter which tries to stop down that the rotating motion of the shaft so basically this bearing like it tries to rotate that part in the opposite direction so somehow this particular uh, shaft is rotating clockwise and the bearing is like exerting a force in anti clockwise direction so somehow like the twisting of that particular shaft is likely to happen so that particular twisting is nothing but the torsional effect so that's why due to that twisting you know a shearing likely the material uh, it material on the shaft it can be sheared off so that's why this particular uh, phenomenon is known as the torsional stress so basically this particular torsional stress is more likely to happen in uh, the rotating shafts in the rotating round bars also so moving ahead next and the last one is nothing but the bending stress so suppose i am having a beam which is fixed at one end and free at the other end that is nothing but the your cantilever beam so suppose there is a load acting on the opposite side of the fixed end and it tries to bend that particular beam so somehow the like the bending will occur over here in this case in such a way that you know the beam the lower portion of the beam is there into compression and the upper portion of the beam is there into tension it means the more elongation will takes place on the upper side and the less com uh, more compression will takes place on the down side of the beam so it uh, then in that case you know it is termed as then that particular stress developed inside that beam is termed as the bending stress so bending stress is you know is the phenomenon which is only suitable for the beams or as the uh, members like the type different types of the beam so it is suitable only for the beams so 
guys uh, this particular bending stress can be termed as the sigma b so guys that was the you know the five basic types so as so far we have seen that is nothing but the first one was the tensile the load is acting perpendicular in such a way that it is the pulling action next one is the compressive the load is acting perpendicular in such a way that it is like the compression next one is the shear stress torsional stress bending stress so guys that was the all the different types of stresses which we have seen so guys i hope you understood this particular simple topic that is the different types of stresses so guys if you like my video please do hit like if you in case of any doubts please do leave a comment and guys thank you for watching my uh, video please do subscribe to my education channel engineers academy